Hello, I'm Darina Allen and I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be participating in this Grow It Forward campaign in conjunction with the Cork County Library. And I believe that uh, seeds have been distributed all around uh, for people to grow some of their own vegetables. So I hope you're having fun sowing those seeds and by now a lot of the, uh, the seeds will have germinated and you will have your vegetables ready to eat and you might be wondering what to do with them. So in this little uh, session I'm going to do uh, some beetroot, talk about beetroot, cooking beetroot. Beetroot's a fantastic vegetable. I'll tell you why, because it's not just one vegetable, there are three different vegetables in one. But as well as that, then you'll have some tomatoes. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to make a gorgeous little uh, tomato salad. Uh, and we'll serve that with some little bocconcini. How delicious is that? So good to grow some of your own food. You know exactly what's in it. You know it's had no sprays. And it's, uh, gardening is so good for both your physical and for your mental health. Uh, and it's really wonderful life skill to learn how to do. So here are some beetroot. Are your beetroot as big as these yet? Uh, now, beetroot people generally think of as something you just buy in a jar that's kind of pickled and kind of vinegary and kind of not particularly palatable a lot of the time. But actually you can have it, you can eat it raw. You can, uh, you can just uh, slice it and grate it and eat it raw, it's delicious. You can make little beetroot crisps from it, as you might with the potato crisps. Or you can actually uh, eat it, uh, you could eat it raw or you can eat it cooked and hot or cold. Okay, so now, um, here's a lovely beetroot, they've just been washed. And so for a lot of recipes, you might start off by cooking it. Now, you can wrap them up and you can actually uh, put them into the oven and roast them in the oven, just covered in a roasting tin. And it takes ages and ages, but they're delicious. It's sort of moderate oven. Or otherwise, a lot of recipes, you might start off by cooking them first. But I just want to say something. I suppose first you would trim them. Now, don't trim them, to, don't trim them right down to here, because if you do, while they're cooking, they'll kind of bleed out all their color. And also make sure not to cut off the little tail either, because the same thing will happen. Um, so you can just do them like this. And then you could, if you haven't already washed them, take them over to the sink and wash them and just rubbing them with your hands but don't scrub them because you could damage the skin and then a lot of the flavor will actually just leach out and a lot of the color will leach out. So now, to, to cook them, just put them into a saucepan of water. They should be covered. This is cold water. Bring it up to the boil. You can put a little salt into the water like that and then just cover it. We we'll bring it slowly up to the boil and it depends on the beets. When the beets are young, sometimes they take as little as 15 minutes and other times they take much longer than that. They can, in the winter, they can take up to two hours to cook. So, but in the summer, they're absolutely gorgeous and really quick to cook. Now, how do you know they're cooked? Well, basically, Gary, oh, I forgot to introduce you to Gary. This is Gary Hi. Masterson. Hi. Gary put these on earlier on. And basically, they've been cooking, what, I suppose, uh, half an hour to a quarter of an hour or something. And you know when they're, co they're cooked, when, if you rub them, these are still very hot, if the skin rubs off easily like that, then you know that they're cooked. So I'm just uh, going to cut that into little wedges like that. And actually, we'll make some pickled beetroot. So can I, shall I add those, that in with the rest of those there, Gary? Now, I'm I want to talk about that for one minute, but in the meantime, I'm going to make a little pickle to do your own homemade, delicious pickled beetroot, okay? Um, we just put some water in here. I've got about um, 16 fluid ounces of water, and then I'm going to add into that, I'm going to add in some sugar. So I'm making for all the world a little syrup. So on and bring that up to the boil. And when it comes to the boil, I boil it for a couple of minutes and then I will add in some vinegar, about eight fluid ounces of white wine vinegar or in indeed for that matter, it could be actually, uh, it could in fact be wine vinegar. I used white wine vinegar there. And then I'll just pour that over my beets and then I have a delicious um, pickled beetroot. But I want to go back for a minute here um, to these stalks, but I would never waste these stalks because I would use both the stalks, look, I could chop all those stalks like that, 
and uh, then I cook the strokes in a little boiling salted water, toss them for three or four minutes, toss some little extra virgin olive oil, put some little uh, maybe chopped parsley or little chili flakes or something with it, delicious vegetable. And then all of these leaves of course um, can also uh, be used in a salad and they're also delicious or you can cook them exactly like spinach or use them in a salad and full of goodness and nutrients so don't waste any of that. You could do a great big dish of this to put in the centre of the table or you can do it as a starter either. Some nice greens uh, to put on the outside. Now some of those, I know you've been growing some little oriental greens as well. Uh, so you could take, uh, I have some various little greens here. I'm going to put a little bed of those on a plate. Look, this is uh, some of those mustard greens. Those kind of, these are called mustard streaks. There's a little pak choy and bok choy there. Look, that one, I know you're also growing peas. So these are pea flowers. So we could put a, a few of those there. Um, let me see what else I have. This is a little bit of mizuna. There we go, a nice little bed of whatever you have anyway. So that's good, and that's a little tiny bit of chard. We'll put that in. So for the dressing, I need about, usually when you're making a, a salad dressing, you should never have to buy a salad dressing because it's so easy. So you just take three parts oil to one part vinegar. So I'll just take a little tablespoon there, and then we'll take three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil Olive oil is really good for you, so um, much better than a lot of those nut oils. So three of those, and then I'm going to take a tablespoon, it could be red or white wine vinegar. Gary's just handed me the red wine vinegar, which will be lovely with the beetroot. Um, I also need a little honey, a good teaspoon of honey, and look out for local honey as well for that. So also we'll put in a little Dijon mustard there. And we'll whisk all of that around and then we'll put a little uh, flaky sea salt, a little of that, and some freshly ground pepper. There we go. Now, so this is the dressing and that would be delicious with any little mixture of lettuces or on a tomato salad or anything as well. The sugar is pretty much dissolved in the water to make my pickle. You could also, if you want to, add in some onion and that will pickle as well and it will take on uh, the sort of beetroot colour. Now this is chorizo, it's got, it's like a salami, but really tasty and delicious. So we'll a few little slices of that and then I also want a little, uh, an egg. So there we go, we'll cut that in half. These are very hard boiled, but they could be, if you like, you could have them a little softer in the centre into the pan for a minute. Now you could put the salami or the chorizo, you could put it straight onto your salad if you like, but what I want is I want the, the oil to sort of run out of it a little bit so I can drizzle that over the egg. Uh, the syrup is really boiling here. All of the sugar is dissolved. So into that, I'm going to pour the vinegar, just like that. Couldn't be simpler, how simpler it is to make some lovely pickled beetroot yourself. And then, I'm just going to pour it over the beetroot, but after it's sat in there uh, for half an hour, an hour, I'd leave it in until it gets cool anyway, at the very least, then it will look like this. And then you can put it, if you want to, into jam jars or into kilner jars, but keep, give it as a present to friends, uh, but it'll keep for months on end. Okay, so now a couple of little bits of egg. We'll do maybe three pieces. This is going to be sort of for one person, for a... I'm going to put a little dressing over the leaves like that. Now you see I have enough for doing the whole big thing. A few of those on. So you've got this lovely sweetness of the beetroot there. Oh, how delicious is that? Kind of slightly spicy um, chorizo. Uh, some of that paprika oil over the top like that. This is a just a gorgeous uh, combination. Now, I also going to grate a little hard cheese over the top of it. I don't know whether you recognize this cheese. This is a wonderful Irish farmhouse cheese called Coulet. It's a Gouda type cheese. Grate some cheese over the top like that. And now, can't you imagine how delicious that would be to eat? Uh, so, the chorizo is slightly warm. Of course, here the piece is especially pickled, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, the eggs are hard boiled eggs lettuce, you have everything there 
for a really satisfying, delicious and super nutritious um, it could be enough for a light lunch, actually. And then if you wanted to, you could serve it with a little mayonnaise. This is a homemade mayonnaise. That's why it's so lovely in yellow. And you could put a dollop of mayonnaise with it as well. And that would be really gorgeous and some lovely uh, crusty bread. So how quick was that to make? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little tomato salad with uh, uh, it could be a plain tomato salad with some lovely, that lovely fresh basil that you've grown as well. The whole secret of a tomato salad is a really ripe tomato. And now if you go out and pick your own tomatoes, you notice that amazing smell, the smell of a tomato plant. Uh, and you can click off the little, uh, there's a sort of little a hinge on the top of the calyx, the little top of the tomato that breaks off. And then you can pull that out and smell them. They're so gorgeous. Now, this we've got several different uh, colored tomatoes here. Uh, they're lovely too. So you can cut them in different shapes. Gary has cut some of these across the equator. But this one is kind of greeny in color. Uh, it looks as though it mightn't be ripe, but it absolutely is ripe. So look, it's nice to put them different, uh, a few different shapes. And look, I think that's plenty with that there. So a little bit of salt, a little, I could use the dressing I did earlier, um, and a little lemon juice. Squeeze a little lemon juice on. Again, some lovely local honey. Drizzle this on and just think about, think about eating it. Then you'll know how much to put on. That's probably enough. And it'll balance, the honey will balance with the lemon juice, remember there. A little extra virgin olive oil. And again, you'll notice that it tastes and smells completely different to what you might have bought in the supermarket during the winter. So there's magic in growing your own food. And not only the satisfaction you get yourself, but the reaction of other people. Some of these lovely little purple leaves of the purple basil. There we go. At, at its most basic, that is just a delicious um, salad like that. And you could do some very thin slices of red onion, sprinkle a few little slices of red onion over it like that. Wouldn't that be, doesn't that look delicious? This is Bocconcini. Look, oh, isn't that a fancy name? These are little tiny mozzarella balls. Love, look, see how lovely and tender they are. So if you wanted to make it a little bit more substantial again, um, you could pop one or two of these on as well, or a little slice of, of uh, mozzarella either. Tiny a little bit more olive oil just over the top. And there we are. So, and then again, this would be just delicious um, with some lovely crusty bread, some sourdough bread or a lovely uh, crusty loaf of bread. So uh, once again, delighted that all of you are participating uh, in this marvelous initiative, the Grow It Forward campaign 2021 in conjunction with Cork County Council Library. So here, oh yeah, Gary, how impressive is that? That is a tomato plant. Uh, you'll be familiar with this. This and these are little flowers will eventually turn into tomatoes. Uh, you can see that we've just growing it in a recycled tin, so you don't need anywhere fancy. It could be in a nice on your windowsill, uh, but in direct sun. Tomatoes love sun. Uh, so I hope you've had lots of fun uh, planting your seeds and that this will have given you a taste for growing and how magical it is to sow a seed and then for it to germinate and for it to grow into something delicious that you can eat and share with your family. And that's a skill for life. And gardening is really good for both your physical and your mental health. And it's so much fun. If you take photographs and send them to us, if you're very proud of what you did, and I hope you enjoy them as well. Thank you for joining me. Bye.